Oh, oui, 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 we are here. Oh, oui, oui. oui. <laughs> Et voilà. <laughs> 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 My chicken, it's as if my chicken has a beret. Le poulet has a beret. Avec la beret. Take two. Wow, it's going a little crazy. I have no control. No control, I tell you. Hi! 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 Oh, voilà, Bonjour! Bonsoir! Bonjour! Bonsoir. I don't speak French, but I have a good French accent in English. Oui. <laughs> oh, oh, she she dressed for the occasion. I'm I'm a little Austrian tonight. <laughs> Where am I? I'm like sleepy, sleepy cow You're neck. Sleepy hollow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. I had to, you know, my son Jack gave this to me for Christmas. Oh, um, it's, oh. it's, it's nice because, um, you know, all the hairdressers are closed here, and I realized I, my hair needed to be colored. Here's my hairdresser. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, my hair's in ponytail all the time, so but I it, I might get hot cooking in this, so I may actually take off. <laughs> is, it, is it wool? It is. <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's so pretty. That was a great present. Très joli. <laughs> what? Okay. No, my hair is on. <laughs> what? What? Uh, what? Take it away. Yeah. Well, the chicken doesn't have a mask on because the chicken goes nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> and it's my gosh. <laughs> it's rubber too, so it doesn't you know, need one. Uh. So I'm excited for crepes. Yum. Yummy. Well, we have, we have one person to thank tonight for this inspiration. And that is my, well, it's my lovely and wonderful brother-in-law, Stephen, who we affectionately call Sister Stephen because <laughs> he's part of our sisterhood. Because, you know, there are three girls from our side of the family. We also have two half-sisters and a stepsister. So there are six girls in my family. So yep. It's very difficult for boys when you know you get married to come into our group here. So the um, coven, the coven. <laughs> it's a whole ritual thing. It's a big, you know, black bowl. Anyway, we won't get into details. But um, so Stephen, who we call Sister Stephen, gave me this for Christmas. So um, anyway, thank you, Stephen. Is this your christening moment? <laughs> I have made two crepes about thirty seconds ago on this pan. And I have to say it works really well, which is good because if it didn't, we would be in trouble. <laughs> We'd be making We're having food. the filling. <laughs> Song is the cream. Or the spoon. Um, yeah. Actually, the filling's so good, you probably would. You could eat it um, in it with a spoon, but we're going to put it on some crepes. Um, okay. So this is some good comfort food. Also, this is sort of Frenchy comfort food. I felt like I would wanted to be anywhere but here this week. Um, and France seemed like a good place to go to. So okay. <laughs> let's go to France. All right. Hey, in our minds. Vive la France. Okay. So, um, um, it's kind of, I wouldn't say it's complicated. It's just a lot. So it, this is the type of meal that, um, you know, you want to make when you've, you know, you've got time. It's a great party um, dish too, because it looks impressive. Um, your know, level of difficulty, I'd say it's sort of medium. Party it's not dish. But meaty. I know we'll party with your family. <laughs> that doesn't, with a sick of seeing you, maybe this will make them happy. Um, so, um, but it's, it is, the level of difficulty is a little higher than some of the other things I've made. So just so you know, but you just have to give yourself some time and be forgiving. Um, and that's pretty much all I need to know. Um, the crepe batter, because it is a batter, I mean, a crepe is essentially a very thin pancake. Um, mm -hmm. The ingredients are eggs, milk. Um, actually, we put water in this one. Oh, there are the dogs. Anyone can get the dogs? That would be great. <laughs> dogs on the set. Monitor, where are you? Where's yeah. the baby? Hi, okay. anyone? Dogs? Okay. Um, flour, 
and some melted butter. And so that's all that goes into it. Of course, it wouldn't be Holly's homegrown recipe if we didn't add some herbs. So I like to take some fresh herbs and I chop them and I actually put them in the batter. So when you make the crepe, okay, cool. there's these, which I just so happen to have one made here. It's really pretty little. Look at that. Oh, oh, beautiful. Oh, that looks textbook, Holly. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. Oh. Okay. So, um, so oh. if you put, so it's kind of fun to put the herbs in the batter because then you get the little pretty flecks. This can, this dish can also go sweet. Um, in Croatia, like Lisa has done a, um, a couple months ago or a couple mm -hmm. days ago. I don't know how long we've been. Ago. We don't know. There's no time. It's all elastic. <laughs> Um, Palatinke, which is basically a crepe you fill with jam or, or Nutella and things like that. I mean, a lot of cultures do these types of very thin, you know, cooked on high heat, really fast type of dishes. So, um, but this is a traditionally French recipe and, and the um, mushroom and spinach combination is also very French. Um, a lot of times the herb that goes with this is tarragon. Mm -hmm. My family aren't big tarragon fans. So we're not going to go tarragon. We're going to go parsley and chives. But you certainly could go tarragon, which would be full-on traditional Frenchie. Um, or you could even go a little dill, I would say. This is kind of a spring herb um, type of meal um, with the spinach and the mushrooms. It tastes really good. And thyme, actually, would be good with the mushrooms. Mm -hmm. So well, experiment. Well, Mike's having expectations. I can hear the song already. <laughs> <laughs> Great expectations. Mm -hmm. Great expectations. <laughs> So to, I've already made the batter, which I will go get. Well, actually, we're not going to get in the fridge because we're going to use that last. You have after you make the batter, which I'm not going to do with us today, because you literally take all those ingredients I just said: egg, flour, pinch of salt, um, melted butter, milk, and you put it in the Cuisinart all together. Just throw it all in, and you hit go, and it's 10 to 20 seconds until it's okay. all smooth, and that's it. Um, and, oh, and also your fresh herbs, if you want to put mm -hmm. the fresh herbs in it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all you have to do. So since this is a longer meal, I thought we don't need, I don't need to show, you know, nobody, you guys don't need to watch me putting that in and pushing it for 10 seconds. But the most important thing is once the batter's done, pour it in a container or bowl, put it in the refrigerator, because it really needs, and this is sort of true for all batters, needs to rest a little because all the flour needs to absorb the liquid and the glutens. And you'll notice it's a little thicker than when you put it in. Um, so yeah, really, all that gluten develops. Yeah, so it's really important you let it rest. So I went ahead and made it beforehand about um, 45 minutes ago. So it's been in the refrigerator plenty of time. So um, we'll bring it out when we do the crepes. But normally you would do the batter first and then cook the filling because that's going to take some time. And that'll give okay. you plenty of time to do it when you get ready. So let's do the filling first. So the filling, um, so again, this is French cuisine, so we do not, we're not shy about the butter, so don't be alarmed <laughs> about the butter. We love butter. Mm. We never are on Corona Kitchen. We're always on. That carries the flavor. We like yeah. it. Yeah. 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 It, there's five, you start with five tablespoons of butter and awesome. a shallot. So that's, yeah, <laughs> good. But um, there you go. So you melted it? It's melting right now. I'm going to get a, um, hold on, let me get okay. a, my whisk. So oh, you're going to okay. want a whisk for this because I'm we're going to get out like a bechamel sauce, which is a white cream sauce. Um, milk, literally milk and cream. Both. We're going to cook a little flour. Um, so this is a basic bechamel that actually you can use for all kinds of things. There's a wonderful, um, it's kind of like, I call it like a white lasagna recipe. So instead of red sauce, you use a bechamel and it's kind of the well, same. Well, that's very moussaka, Greek. Yes, it's, yeah. Greek. it's delicious. Uh, that's another Deborah Madison. Debriana, can you move Holly's name so we can see her cooking it? Uh, I can take it off. Everybody <laughs> now knows who she is. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that, I just want to be able to see everybody to see what you're doing. Can I, do you want me to push it down a little? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's well, great. Oh, perfect. Hunch. Hi. Would you up okay. anyway? She's the hunch rack of Notre Dame. <laughs> and we've got the shallots and the, and the five tails of the butter, and they're going to cook down. Um, you just want to let them, um, this is literally just to kind of warm them through, get them a little translucent, and your heat's on about medium. So and just then, just the butter is in there? This is just butter and shallots, and it's about um, 
It's one very large shallot, which was about two tablespoons of chopped shallots, okay? Mm -hmm. So once that's done, we're gonna add um, the mushrooms because you want these to take some time. So I chose, and you can, again, there's so many great mushrooms out there. These are um, uh, baby portobello's. Mm -hmm. so I like these because they're kind of, they have some weight to them. I really mm -hmm. feel like I'm, and uh, <laughs> punching in here. So um, I sliced some of them up and you can also buy them sliced. So, but this is gonna be a uh, two Are you using your new knife? Well, yes I am. <laughs> so um, let's put these in and you can buy, I've actually bought two of these sliced and then I bought one whole just to show you that. So how, how much, um, how many pounds? These are um, two 16 ounce. So it's about two pounds. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit over because I love mushrooms. So I really want him to have a lot of mushroom in there. And mushrooms shrink when you cook them. So you know, it looks like a lot there, but that's gonna really cook down. And mm -hmm. the same with spinach. It's gonna feel and sound like a lot, but it's really not. Well, it is, but it will shrink down. And you're cooking for four? Yeah, but you know my four is like well, eight. Well, her four. Her four <laughs> is like eight. Her four is like eight. Okay. You just, I just double. I just double everything because that's what I have to do. Okay. Because they'll be, like I said, they'll be eating cereal an hour after dinner. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's get these cooked down. Okay. So these might take up. These are going to take a minute. And now it's, you know, it's on pretty high heat, medium, medium high heat. And you can, I, I again, I like to use tongs. They're easy to pull them up, and that way you don't get as many mushrooms flying. Um, now and so was that salted butter? It was not. It was unsalted butter, which is very important because with a dish like this, with this much cheese, you really want to um, control the salt. Mm -hmm. um, use um, salted butter. So I'm going to be using, huh, surprise, holly some grown salt. We're going to do Whoa. Rancho Moraga. We're going to do about two pinches, about a teaspoon. So we're going to put it now with the mushrooms because that's going to help cook the mushrooms down too. And fresh ground pepper, which is all the way over here. <laughs> I forgot to get it. Just in case you guys need to know. Just in case you need to know where all my things are in my kitchen. Okay. So we're going to just keep kind of gently tossing these. Uh, there, I don't think there's anything better than mushrooms and butter. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking about it because um, I I want to make um, a salmon Wellington. And in this, uh, my friend was asking me, well, what are you going to use instead of duck cell? I'm like, um, nothing. <laughs> Why wouldn't I use duck cell? Right. Which is finely, finely chopped mushrooms that are cooked for a long time until they really concentrate. And they're, it's so good. Yum. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with any. No. That's no. <laughs> Take it all. No, there isn't. So basically, you have butter, onions, I mean, shallots and mushrooms in there Correct. with some salt. A little bit of salt, right? It has a tiny bit of herbs in it. But it is important to put the salt in with your mushrooms. It does help let them sweat a little faster, breaks them down a little, because you want them to cook. This, this Again, this is a lot of mushrooms in a pan. So it does take... <laughs> A bit of time but as you can see they're already cooking down they smell oh it's like such a good smell it's i mean heaven. time where i feel like i should be adding white wine you know or red wine um and you you could with this recipe actually i thought i only i, 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 I could add sherry too i think yeah, like, i usually mm -hmm. add sherry and garlic um mm -hmm. or you could do more a little marsala would be nice yep. if you have i don't have any white wine open i only have red and i didn't think red yeah, that's a little too heavy. Yeah, not red. We didn't work. So, um, so we're just gonna add more butter. And that's all we're gonna do. <laughs> butter, wine. I always substitute. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Whatever. That's perfectly normal. Okay. So you notice we're getting um, some really good, you know, juices down here at the bottom. That's all the mushroom letting off the, uh, starting to shrink and letting off their juices. Oh my God, these are so good. This is like, <laughs> I'm just eating this. Okay, that's all, folks. Bye -bye. Um, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. All right, let me get a quick bowl to put these in. 
Put you out. So you're just um, basically sweating them and then you're going to stop? We're going to sweat it and forget it. <laughs> I wanted to set that up awful. Okay, so we're going <laughs> to. I'm not going to put the spinach in until the very last because it wilts to nothing in two seconds. But these, you know, you want them to really cook through. And remember, once these get rolled up in the crepes in the sauce, they're going to cook for another 30 minutes in the oven. So these don't have to be like completely dead cooked down to nothingness. Okay, so that's good right there. So I don't know, how long have we been cooking? Like these five minutes, six minutes? Maybe. Yeah. Threaten them, don't kill them. Threaten, don't kill. Okay, so we're going to just put these aside in a bowl. Because, because we have to make the bechamel, it just takes up too much room in the pan to whisk it. So we're going to put this aside. Okay. We don't need to clean the bowl out. We're fine. Um, and guess what? We get to because there's butter in there. Yeah, more well, butter. Oh my god, I used that. Okay. Okay, so, we're gonna use this one. so now we get to add um, two tablespoons of butter. More then, butter. More butter is more better. Is more <laughs> yes. Okay. So two tablespoons of butter. We're gonna do the roux, which is I'm sure many of you've heard that before. Roux is the um beginning you know, the thickening of the sauce so um we add butter and flour and then we whisk it are you taking off your shoes what are you doing I'm so tall with the thing <laughs> <laughs> bend right now I'm doing my squats okay so let's get the butter melted okay again two tablespoons of butter don't worry about the calories no, do not think, no thinking about the calories, no. As I said in my household, after the inauguration, then I'll think about it. So this is five. So then we need it. I'm just eating what I want to eat right now. I'm eating what I want to eat, too bad. Okay, so we're going to add, this is five tablespoons of butter. I mean, excuse me, flour. <laughs> okay. More butter. More butter, just whatever. <laughs> More butter with the butter. Um, okay, so this is five tablespoons. Peggy isn't calling this out right now. I know. <laughs> so um, what you do is you, the flour, uh, flour is going to get absorbed or is going to absorb the butter, and you just mix it around, and it's going to make kind of a paste. And it's sort of messy and weird looking, but don't worry. You're, it's, this is right. So you just keep mixing it around with your whisk, makes this paste and you want it to kind of cook a little bit because you don't want it to taste flowery like you just took a thing of flour. So we're going to turn the heat down to low. Mm -hmm. and this is just this is the start of a bechamel. Okay. So from here, we do this differently. I do this differently. Okay. Hold on. Okay. It's all good. <laughs> if it turns out In fact, it's delicious. Lots of butter. <laughs> You can't really make a mistake here. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can add some more butter. Okay. <laughs> add, um, we are going to add. Hold that thought. Okay. Two cups. I thought it was one. We're going to do two cups of milk. And we're going to okay. do it slow because this milk is cold. Really, it should be room temperature, but that's okay. Okay. Remember, your heat's on low. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to slowly add this to your pan and just keep mixing. Yep, there's lots of butter. This, yeah, you, how can you go wrong? <laughs> you can't really. So the doctor says you can't anymore. Okay, so this is going to start to get really pasty, which is exactly what you want. Just keep whisking it. Okay? Yep, it's thick. I can see it's thick. Yeah, we're going to do another cup. So it's two cups of milk. And again, remember, it's nice and slow. And the best stuff's on the sides here, so don't forget to get the stuff off the side. If you start to see it um, getting too brown, your heat's too high. So we're gonna keep going. Okay, so you haven't added anything else, and no salt, no herbs, nothing yet. No, okay. we're just gonna this flour, butter, and milk. Yeah, okay. this is white sauce. What's better than that? <laughs> So as you can see, you just got to keep, you, this is just, this, there isn't a faster way to do this. It's just keep whisking. 
And eventually you're going to, you don't want to do So eventually, you're what are you looking it. for? Um, you want it to be nice and smooth. Like you want to get the, the lumps all broken up. Okay. Okay. So you just keep doing that. Um, also, because we just have to do this, we're going to add a cup of More cream. butter. No. A cup of cream. Some cream to the butter. Okay. Add right, cream to the butter and the milk. Yes. <laughs> Dairy products. This is, uh -oh. this is my pro Wisconsin um, show. So you don't have, this does not have to be heavy cream. This can be just another cup of milk. But at this point, <laughs> I mean. Use the cream. You're going to skip now on the calories? Okay. It's insurrection okay. week. Use the cream. It's insurrection <laughs> week on Corona Kitchen. Um, I think. This is Peggy. She says, you all get a past night being from a foreign country and all. Besides, Holly seems a bit out of sorts with all her new Christmas items she's learning to use on live TV. <laughs> it's beautiful there. She's so big. All right. <laughs> she's doing pretty well. Courage. <laughs> this is kind of, it's hard to do this. Uh, you just have to, you have to be able to concentrate. It's hard to talk. But I, you know, that's what I, that's what I get paid to do. Oh, wait a minute. I don't. Okay. <laughs> it's a free show, people. Okay. Free okay show. So, so you're making that. And then what are you going to do with it? You're going to add ch the cheese to that? We are. And then we're going to add the spinach. And then we're going to add the mushrooms. And it's going to make this creamy, mm. creamy, spinachy mushroom deliciousness. Comfort filling. And then we're going to scoop that into the crepes and then roll them. Okay. okay. So it stays on low and just okay. keep let it keep cooking. And you're okay. gonna. So what makes a bechamel is a surprise. The surprise ingredient is nutmeg. I know it sounds weird because you think of pumpkin pie. It's not. Nope. So these are actual little nutmeg pods, seeds, and this is a nutmeg grinder. Oh, you have the old-fashioned grater. I love that. I have one too. Oh, here in Moraga. So you just take. This is less than a, it's like an eighth of a teaspoon. Just enough. Too much of this is no good. It's like truffle oil. Just a yeah. tiny bit. So yeah. we're just it really making a difference. It's a wonderful it Especially with the mushroom. It really, it's great. Okay, so we're just going to do a tiny bit of that. And put that away. Well, that a white sauce always like cheese and um, cream and butter with nutmeg. It's, there's just nothing better. And this you add a little um, salt and pepper, but we're going to substitute it with a little holly salt. So this is when you can add the salt. What do you have? What salt is it? This is the Rancho Moraga. So this is the dill. Um, okay. Part, part, it's dill, parsley, and chive. So it's, you know, and I'm using parsley and chive in the other one. So I thought this would be, and the dill is not going to be overwhelming. So it'll be okay. Okay. All right. so we have a comment from one of the viewers. So basically this one, this is one large bear product with some veggie stuffed in the side. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> it's French. That's what French food is. Hello. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. French food in a nutshell. Okay. So, <laughs> um, all right. So we're going to just let this cook through. And as you can see, it's still a little liquidy. So we want to bring it just to a bubble, not a boil, just so the outside's bubbling a little bit because that's going to thicken. It starts to thicken because of the flour. It starts to get thick. Did you hear that, people? Like yeah. our hand. Starts to get a little thick. <laughs> if it's not thickening, turn up your heat, but not too hot because you don't want to scorch the, the dairy, the milk, and the cream. Okay, that's looking good. It's not going to suck. I'm going to tell you that right now. This is going to be good. Well, okay. see, all that stirring, it's your exercise. <laughs> this arm has burned 150,000 <laughs> calories. Okay. It's really nice to have something positive and wonderful to experience right now in our world and i'm grateful for this crazy <laughs> butter and cream that's positive yeah. butter 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 and cream. Cream. all right so we're heating up a little bit so okay. when you see, um see i don't know if you guys can see this closely but the sides start to bubble up a little bit first just right along the edge right along the rim here uh -huh. that's a good sign that means we're just see how i don't know if you can tell how much it's already thickened up <laughs> Yes, no talking. Holly, Holly, let's concentrate. Last minute. No. Shush. Okay. Jeez. All right. Now yes, we're gonna... well, if we we could have a musical interlude. 
Yes, yeah, same. Come on, you guys are the talented ones here. Okay, so next we're gonna add spinach. Oh, it's fresh spinach. How nice. Fresh spinach. I mean, you don't have to, but it really makes a huge difference, I think. Yeah. Um, and we are going to do, I wrote this down so you all would know. Oh, the measurement. Spinach. I've been counting. That's your third handful. Four. Ounces. Ten ounces. Four oh, handful. Five. Okay. Ten ounces. How, are you, well, how much is it that big bucket? weight on here so this is over this is like 20 ounces so it's about okay half. so about half okay yeah i'm gonna have to do this i may have to do this in um or five handfuls i was counting you wait to see how fast this cooks down so now see how thick we're getting here so oh this yeah one nice and or just and remember the mushrooms have our oh my god look at this how this is exactly how it's working it's working yeah, it's working um, Someone says, really? Does Holly think we can see the bubbles from California? <laughs> oh, my. Uh, no, handfuls are not. All right. All right. We're going to add our fresh herbs now, too. So we've got some um, parsley. And we've got some chives. So we're going to do about a tablespoon chopped each. Mm. And I, there is a way, like if you're a real spinach lover, you could add a little more spinach and less mushrooms. But yeah. when once you make it, you can see, you know, how much sauce is in there and what you're kind of what you're taking up, the volume you're taking up with. Well, um, remember, this, this is you could add shredded chicken to that if you had a yeah, you know, rotisserie chicken left over. Yes, this actually um, part of this recipe is inspired by the New York Times chicken and spinach mm. but i want i like it you know I, I really love the flavor of mushrooms i think it gives it a real complexity because mushrooms have a nice woody flavor to them you mm -hmm. know spinach, I mean, chicken is just going to absorb whatever flavors you put in here but I think the well do not insult the chicken sorry <laughs> i eat chicken all the time okay now we're gonna add the mushrooms back in and see how they have quite a bit of liquid in them. Yeah, are you gonna add the liquid back in too? Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna add it all. Okay. all. It all has flavor, it all has really good flavor. Mm. So now this thing is completely to the top. Oh my God. So Someone's saying, good. so Holly, your family is going to eat that whole pan full? <laughs> no, these are gonna go into crepes and they're gonna eat an entire plate full of crepes with this in. <laughs> She's gonna add the flour. Oh look who look who's here! Oh, is it Edgar? Edgar, oh, yeah, Edgar loves crepes. You, oh, Edgar. I heard he was making crepes, and I wanted in on this. <laughs> okay, so now for the turn off the heat. Okay, and we're gonna add the best part is the cheese. Yay! Yum. Yum. So this is a, a bear, which is a French is the French cheese. I had to say it like that. It's um usually it's fondue. It has a nice melting. It's very similar to Swiss cheese. So if you can't what find is it, it Gruyere. So okay. you can use this if you can't find it. Um, I also put in some Havarti in here. Havarti is a little more <laughs> creamy because we need more cream. <laughs> Edgar, more cream, more cream, more cream. More cream. <laughs> oh, I want. <laughs> No, it sounds so ridiculous when I say it. The that. chicken says, go use the cows, please. <laughs> it didn't sound wrong until I said it out loud. Um, <laughs> it is creamy and it's really good. Okay, it's so we're very gonna, melty. It is very melty, which That's I want. so good. It's mostly Greer. It's a, a cup and a half of Greer and a half a cup of, um, of Havarti. Okay, so the heat's off and we just basically want to... Um, you're just going to melt that in there. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Remember, this is all going to go in a pan and go in the oven for half an hour. So it, this does not, you don't want to over, overcook this. So we're just going to let this. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, that looks good. Oh. I'll be right back. Okay. We've had cheesy shows, Lisa and her grilled cheese last night. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was that? Comfort. It just is. You can't, you can't not eat it. Last night, I couldn't not eat the grilled cheese. <laughs> a little bit more of my salt. 
Okay. And a little bit more pepper. She uh, tortured us with that grilled cheese. Mmm, delicious. So good. I think I'm going to make it again, actually. <laughs> All right. We're going to do a little more salt and pepper because I, I like to hit it now because otherwise it's, sometimes it's too late. Okay. So we're going to set this aside. Okay. This, mol this molten cheese. Mm. And now we're going to make the crepes. Let me go get the back. Yes, we like helping the dairy farmers. <laughs> Don't you wish we could be Marcel over there, Debriana? Mm. <laughs> so funny. I have a group of friends in Mar uh, just here in town that will always um, text me afterwards and be like, is there any left? Is there any left? left? <laughs> <laughs> they want me to do a live show. And I said, well, I guess yes, Corona Kitchen <laughs> leftovers. Yes, it's not so much fun. But, um, okay, so here's the batter. Okay. 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 Better. It's gonna feel like it's a little more run runny than it should be, but that's what it's supposed to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, again, this is milk, eggs, water, and I did chop some fresh herbs in here because I wanted it to look pretty, and I wanted also a little herb flavor in the pancake. Great. Pardon me. Okay. So you can substitute um, another French way to do this: substitute the flour for buckwheat. Flour. Mm. Oh, brown. Yeah, that's the authentic uh, galette, you know, like the Normandy. Mm -hmm. I actually Super prefer good. the crepe, the savory crepe with the buckwheat, but I didn't have any and I couldn't find it. So it's Corona Kitchen. So we improvise. So we're going to use what we got. Okay. So you want the, you want to wait for your pan. This is a special little, again, fancy crepe pan, Sister Steven. Um, this one is nonstick. That is so helpful when you're doing very thin pancakes, like a crepe. You can't. Otherwise, you end up using so much oil. You end yeah. up frying it. And it's just, yeah. it's too heavy and it kind of ruins it. So, mm -hmm. so you need a spatula. Okay. So you take it. I, I like to do this with a ladle or you can use a, um, like a little measuring cup. Measuring cup. cup. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's about, um, this is probably a quarter of a cup. So you take it in the middle and then you lift your pan up. And you're going to tilt it around gently. Oh, look at that. She did look it. Look how fast nice. she did that. Hi, she did a it. Perfect Go ten. The judges give you a perfect 10. See? Oh my God, that pan is gorgeous. And some people didn't have faith in me, okay? I remember, <laughs> I remember who you are. Okay. So, um, <laughs> but the whole thing about rolling it around is to make sure it gets to all the edges. And right. you don't want it to be thick. This really should be thin, like a crepe, right? Oh, so the other, it's funny how that all worked. Um, what's nice is that um, these do cook really fast because they're super thin. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so it's really one, you just kind of take the edge, I mean, see, take the edge of the crepe. So that's a heat resistant um, spatula. It is. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you're gonna, cause it's on medium heat. I mean, this is definitely a hot pan. Um, yeah. And it's important that the heat stay even on the pan that you're not butting with it. I mean, if you notice that it's burning or it's browning too quickly, then definitely turn it down. It's better to air on too low than on too high. Cause you don't want to burn them. Um, and it might take longer, but you can see now the top is already cooked. There's no more liquid right. left. Right. So now I'm just browning basically. Okay. Because um, you don't want them to be doughy, right? Oh, yeah. So I like to see a little color almost there. I oh, so you're just checking it to see, see if there's color. Okay. And you're going to flip it. We're going to flip it. Which is really different from our mom's 1970s contraption, which we'll get into later. <laughs> and, I and I couldn't find one. I don't think they make those anymore. I don't think they do. We did them in a regular frying pan growing up. Did you really? With you can see how easily this lifts. Yeah, um, but I had a mother that tortured us, so that's a whole other story. And you <laughs> look at that. Voila. Bravo. You it. <laughs> so it helps to get under about halfway. And it's just all flipping the wrist. All right. So this <laughs> one is going to cook, and this is going to cook faster than the other side because it pretty much was done. But like I said, I like to keep it a little brown. I like it brown and cooked well through um, and almost a little crispy on the edges because that way when you bake it you still have some crispy on the edges it's good okay so for crepes you want it um 
before you prepare the pot, I mean the pan, um, I like to keep them in between paper towels. It just okay. keeps them separate from one another. I know we're, you know, this is recycled paper towels, so I didn't kill any, no kill trees were killed in these scrapes. Well, they, use, they make bamboo ones now. I know, but you know, with COVID, I have sometimes you just have to take whatever you can get. Oh, you get whatever. I mean, uh, around here, it can still be scarce. So we're going to take the cool thing about crepes is you can cook them. You could even cook them in advance and prepare this the next day because they can sit, you know, because you're going to bake them with the sauce and the filling. You know, right. They could. Mm -hmm. They could. Yes, they could. You go. Okay. But so that's. Won't. That's done. So we're going to take this, we're going to put it on top of the paper towel. We're going to do it all again. Cool. Because I probably, how long has this been going on? This is like my longest show ever. Okay. Two, what is the brand of that pan? You, can you tell us? Next question, which I will tell you in two seconds when I'm not having to concentrate. Oh, right. Somebody said we set a high bar. That's lovely. Thank you. Aww. Bar. I hope you didn't miss our last Friday show. Speaking of bar, <laughs> that was um, a good talk. I love how we go from grilled cheese one night to <laughs> crepes. Fancy there's, crepes. There's a wide berth there. Okay. Right. <laughs> it's a good time to turn on your oven to get it preheated at 350. Um, okay. It is going to take, once the crepes are done, it's going to, you know, we're going to film. So well, let's let this one cook real quick. And then um, I'll so fill one. You, you don't want them too crispy because then if then you can't roll them, right? You can't roll them exactly. Yeah, there's a fine line. I mean, the truth is, this is a carbohydrate that's with the super dairy protein and mushrooms. I mean, you're, it's all going to get mixed together. You, you're not going to go wrong on flavor. It's just texture. You don't. Right. I I prefer it um, not to be like baby foodish. You know, so uh, with a little bit of texture, it's nice. It's nicer. Mm -hmm. um, and it's okay. I worked at a crepe restaurant in college, so I, I was in the kitchen making crepes, and I made all the fillings. Wow, it was, was crazy. crazy. What was your favorite? Um, I didn't eat them. <laughs> I got so sick of them. <laughs> really? Oh I got so sick of crepes. Are you kidding me? But um, I do like that mushroom spinach combination. But I'm I used to like it with ham. Yeah, that's a good one. Then, yeah, a little prosciutto in here wouldn't kill you. Oh, well, it may, actually. Yeah, we, the, we would make all the crepes, you know, ahead of time, and then all of the fillings, but you could sort of mix and match when you came in the restaurant, which was uh, yeah. interesting uh, uh, such a long time ago in a beach town in North Carolina. <laughs> wow. She's a child. Her effect was wide. It made the yes. It's all doing that. Um, the other thing quickly, if you're going to add um, something like prosciutto or pancetta or ham to this, remember how those are very salty. So you just, mm -hmm. I would, if you're going to add that, I would omit adding the salt because it's going to get real salty real fast mm -hmm. if you do that. So just notice like chicken is not, especially if it's just a roasted chicken. Right. Just watch for the salt on a protein that you're going to put in it um, and just make sure you're mm -hmm. not getting salty because nothing's worse if it's too salty. Yeah. Um, okay, so this one's done. See how pretty? They're so pretty. They're just That's pretty. That's pretty. Okay, so we're gonna put that away. All right, so let's move this pan here. I'm trying to do this all in one place. I will, I'm gonna roll one just so you see and we know. Yeah, what and when, and when you, what kind of pan are you gonna put it in? Like a, like a pan? pan. This is the wrong oh, pan. Look. This is, um, Prona Kitchen, and so this, the nice pan I had broke like a week ago. It got dropped. So we're improvising tonight as I was searching for one earlier. Um, you may, I mean, glass is fine, ceramics better, um, whatever you have. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this with a little bit of the sauce, because um, since there's so much butter in it, we're, we're pretty good. Um, I'm gonna put the sauce at the bottom, and then I'm gonna line up the crepes. In okay. The and then I'm going to take some of the sauce and put it on the top. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're going to put it in the oven for about 30 minutes at 350. Okay. And take it out and we're going to gain about five pounds. It'll be awesome. Awesome. It's basically and it's one big French hug. 
It's French enchiladas, okay? <laughs> so the other thing is that I like to serve this with um, a green salad, a nice crispy romaine with a really good vinaigrette, like a Dijon-based vinaigrette dressing. Um, just because the sharpness of the vinegar and all the heavy cream um, is a really nice combo on your cookie. So um, that's how I would do it. Or you could just have a glass of wine. Or you could just have a really <laughs> glass of wine. Um, you know, you could, you could do a Pinot or a Chardonnay. Nice mm. um, so to fill them, I'm just going to do the, um, I'm going to fill them like you roll, like the uh, kind of burrito technique. So you can do several ways. I don't know if you guys can see me. I'll move this over. There you go. Yeah. You can either fold the top two tops and then fold the bottom and have it be like an envelope, like a square like this. Oh, huh. Okay. And then that way, mm -hmm. kind of line them up. Um, but since we're going to be baking these, I'm actually going to do these the still fashion way. We're going to roll them. Yeah. Just like, you know. So give we're going to give them a little roll. Yeah. We're going to fill it. Not too much filling. Cause you, you know, you want them to be nice and, and thick, but it also just depends on the size of your crate. So you're going to have to use your best judgment if it's, you know, half a ladle or two tablespoons, give it a roll. So yeah. um, that's basically it. Okay. So I'll that take a nice Fabulous. I can't wait to see the picture. Money. Bravo. You did it. Yes. It's a, it's a delightful. Salad offsets all the dairy. Yes, it does. <laughs> of course. You're telling yourself that. That's correct. <laughs> a little acid with the cream really does help your palate, like cleanse your palate. So you can eat more, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> Awesome, Holly. Thank you. Thank you so much. Just we say merci. 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 So just in case you need to know, Holly has a website where you can get her salts and vinegars and olive oils, flavored, um, and all kinds of good stuff over there. So check it out. Yes. Bon appétit. Bon appétit. Bon appétit. <laughs> And we are so grateful that you guys are here tonight and hanging out with us. Yay. And if you have any friends that would like to subscribe to us, if you haven't already, please do on YouTube. And um, all the recipes are up on our Facebook page if you're watching from YouTube. And that's our show, people. Thank you. Hang in there, everybody. Everybody wear a mask. Maybe I'll make one for the chicken. <laughs> Somebody that you love. Yes. <laughs> Everybody, everyone stay safe. And cry. <laughs> Thank you, Holly. Bye, guys.